like, comment, and subscribe. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to my channel. I know, I know it's been a minute. It's been a very long time since I've been on YouTube, literally a year since I've been on YouTube. I know, long story, but that is not what we're gonna be discussing today. So I'm gonna do a brief intro. I don't wanna take five minutes, but so many people have been asking me since I'm now officially a paid influencer from Instagram, where is my money going? How is the lifestyle of a paid influencer? I will be completely honest with you. Yes, I get paid from Instagram, but no, it's not enough for me to quit my day job. So I do have a full-time job outside of social media, but it's not always glitz, glamorous lifestyle. Like the, I get paid a couple hundred dollars from Instagram a month and people just want to know what my lifestyle is as far as living arrangements, but it's not enough again to quit my day job. So I wanted to start a series on my YouTube channel about what my finances are like as an influencer from Instagram. Hopefully I can become a paid influencer from YouTube for my YouTube videos, but for now we're just going to focus on my main money that's coming in, the bills I have to pay, the expenses that I have, what it's like being, number one, a single mother, number two, a homeowner. Yes, I have my own house. I have more than one vehicle and people just want to know what my expenses are. So I'm going to call this my expenses report journey. I'm not comfortable, and I'm gonna be completely honest with y'all, I am not comfortable releasing how much money I make for my main source of income. I'm also not comfortable releasing where I work. So just know that I work in the finance industry. I'm not gonna state what company that I work for. I'm also not gonna state how much money that I do make, but just know <laughs> the money that I make and the bills that I am paying, there's more than enough money on that check and some to cover my bills and some extras that I have to go that I have to pay for and what's going on in my life. But I wanted to start off in a month where it is the bare minimum where I am not doing anything. So I figured August would be fabulous. Why? Because my daughter just went back to school. I'm not going to be traveling anywhere. I'm not going to be doing any type of influencer events like that unless they're here in Dallas, Texas or going over and above and beyond in my lifestyle. So I wanted to literally start in the month of August so that I can have a clear slate and start from the bottom. And then y'all can see as I continue on my journey, if I do go somewhere, if I do have money that I'm spending, because I am very much a girl in the middle. I am in the middle. I give luxury vibes, but I'm not a millionaire. So this is what I'm spending my money on. This is how I take care of my expenses, my needs, my wants, my house, my daughter, and I wanted to start this month so y'all can see what I'm doing and how I'm taking care of everything. So with that brief intro, I know it's a little bit long, it's been three minutes, but we're gonna start first with my debt. Now, with this debt, we're gonna go back in time, okay? because I'm gonna start off with the debt that I have paid and now pretty much what's remaining, okay? So we're gonna go all the way back to about 2012. 2012 is when I decided to go back to college. So I graduated from high school in 2006 and I went to college for about two years and then I just stopped going to college. I was not motivated. I did not know what I wanted to do. I just said, I'm not gonna go to college anymore. And that was about 2008. I started back going to college in the fall of 2012. And when I went to college, I was like, okay, let me just get something easy, something quick. And then I decided on sociology. I'm not trying to be a mathematician. I'm not trying to be a space engineer. Let me just get something that's easy that I can find a passion in something that I love. So that's why I went back to college to get my bachelor's degree, which I did achieve in sociology. The reason why 2012 is important is because that's where things kind of changed pertaining to my finances. And then during the time that I was at college, I needed to get a vehicle. So 
the first item on my debt tracker is my Honda. So I have a 2014 Honda Accord. It is paid off. I do still currently own it, but it was $30,000 at the time that I purchased it. I needed a reliable source of transportation because I was a virtual student. I was going to school online, but I had to go back and forth to campuses so that I can take care of work, so I can do exams, labs, so on and so forth. So I had to get a reliable source of transportation. I bought a 2014 Honda Accord, brand spanking new. It was about $32,000 at the time that I purchased it from the dealership. And luckily I was able to pay it off relatively quickly. So I bought it in 2014. It was a six year loan, but I paid it off and it was in October of 2014. And I paid it off in June of 2019. So that is paid off. During that time, after I purchased my Honda, I graduated college where I had a lot of student loans. But you'd be surprised. My student loans did not total like $25,000, $30,000. I only had $13,000 in student loan debt. So you're probably wondering how I was able to pay off my student loans. Well, I became a homeowner in 2019. One of the requirements is to have as least amount of debt as you possibly can in order to be a homeowner because I went through a first time home buyers program. So I went ahead and paid off all four of my student loans. Luckily, I was able to do that every year when I got my income tax return check. So I know a lot of people when they get income tax, they wanna use it on a vacation or they might wanna catch up on bills. I wanted to pay off my student loan debt because I had debt where it was so small of an amount, I didn't wanna just keep continuing to pay like the little $70 a month. Let's just go ahead and take care of this right now, which I did and I'm very happy that I was able to pay off all four loans through Nelnet relatively quickly. So, cause keep in mind, I graduated college in 2015 and then I moved into my house 2019. So literally, four years, I paid off $13,000 in student loan debt. The next thing is a Steinmark credit card. Now y'all are probably like, Kim, girl, you are 34 years old. Why do you have a Steinmark credit card? Steinmark for me was the place to get all of my relatives their gifts. So my mother, my father, both of my grandparents, that was the place to get Mother's Day gifts, Father's Day gifts, birthday gifts, Christmas gifts for those specific people. I can get them on those credit cards because Steinmar even had Polo Ralph Lauren. Steinmar has Michael Kors. Steinmar was the place to get their gifts. But unfortunately, when COVID-19 happened, Steinmar closed. They filed bankruptcy and closed. So I had to pay off my Steinmark credit card because I did not want to continue shopping online. Their website is still active, but I don't want to shop Steinmark online. So I went ahead and closed that credit card. And now I just have to find regular Mother's Day, Father's Day gifts at other stores, or I just get them something off Amazon, right? We all get our relative stuff off Amazon. So now we're going to start with what is actually debt. I want to give a good intro to show that I'm accustomed to paying off debt, right? However, there is some actual debt that I have <laughs> and we're gonna get into the meat and the potatoes of that. So first off on debt, well, excuse me, I have a credit card. I thought that we was gonna start off with some that was paid. I'm sorry. So I have a Chase credit card, but I settled it. With Chase, when COVID-19 happened, I work for a corporation. It's a global corporation. I just work for the North American sector of said corporation. So when COVID-19 happened, it started affecting us before it affected the rest of the US. It started affecting us in December. It's called COVID-19 because it happened in 2019. America didn't catch up until March, 2020. So in 2019 in December, I was like, okay, Things are changing with my job. What am I gonna do? So I tried to contact my credit card companies to ask for assistance. At that point, they were not offering assistance for coronavirus. So I followed back up again in January. They were not offering assistance in coronavirus. Again, the US didn't catch up until March. 
So I made the decision to stop paying my credit card because they were still charging me interest on it. But, and then I settled outside of court. So I believe this was a, the balance on this card was over $5,000. So I just went ahead and settled for a smaller amount um, instead of going to court with them or anything like that. So I think I settled for a little bit over $3,000. And luckily when I stopped paying and they charged off, it was a couple of months later in June, which luckily the company that I work for, I get two things that happen in the summertime. I get a pay raise where they backdated a couple of months. So I get an extra couple hundred dollars on my check. And then in July is when I get an annual bonus. So I took my annual bonus and that was about a month after I made my settlement and I was able to pay off my Chase card immediately. So it was a little bit over $3,000 that I settled for and I just paid that up front, didn't continue to make payments. And that was that. And that's in the year 2020. Okay, now the same company that I get the bonuses for, I'm still working with them till this time. Now, this is the meat and potatoes where it starts. So I have a Capital One credit card just as I had a Chase credit card, right? And my Capital One credit card actually had a balance of over $4,000. So it was roughly like $4,700 on this credit card, right? But I have paid down that balance now, Capital One, I personally do not prefer them. And the reason being is because this happened the same time that I stopped paying on my Chase credit card. However, the reason why I wanted to continue with Capital One is because I have a second Capital One credit card, which I'm gonna get into next. So I didn't wanna leave a bad taste with Capital One because I was gonna be leaving one card open. I didn't want them to lessen the balance, which they later did. And it was just a mess but we ended up making a settlement, which this card, they actually closed in July. So I continued to pay on this card, the minimum payment every month, tried to pay it down when I got a couple extra hundred dollars, but they wouldn't reactivate my cards and let me use it, y'all. So you're still charging me monthly interest. I would pay like $300 one month for this particular card and they would still charge me a $127 finance charge. I couldn't use the card, the card was closed, but they're still charging me like I'm using the card. So I ultimately made a decision to stop paying it. And then when I settled, it was settled for $3,567.74. My monthly payment for this card is $65 a month with no interest. So I can appreciate that. I'm pretty sure though, you're probably sitting there wondering, that's gonna go on your credit. You have a charge off on your credit. Well, I'm a homeowner. I have my house, I'm not trying to apply for a house. I have more than one vehicle, so I'm not trying to apply for a card. I also have another open active credit card, so I'm not trying to apply for a credit card. So I'm not really worried about my credit being affected in that sense. So it really didn't matter that that charged off on my credit. I can wait out the seven years and then I'll have it removed. It's definitely not a problem for me. So my minimum payment is $65 a month. I do plan on having this paid off, this balance, at least by next year. So when I get my income tax return check or the extra money that I'm getting from Instagram, I do pay, plan on paying off this credit card. Next is the credit card that is still open, which is my Capital One, I believe it's my Platinum card. So with this card, they lowered the balance to $300 because I had a charge off which I'm not really tripping over. And the reason being is because $300, I can get a decent hotel. $300, I can get a rental car if I need one. So I'm, I'm really not caring too much about this card. Now, the reason why there's a balance on this card is because last month I went to Swim Thick. It was in Houston. I stayed in Houston for the weekend. And this is my the remainder of what it costs to stay in the hotel. So, I'm going to be paying that off. It's $35 for the minimum monthly payment, but I plan on paying that off relatively quickly. So this is an open active account. This is a settlement. So just be clear, the larger amount is a settlement and I'm just paying off the balance, but this is an actual open account that I still continue to use if necessary. 
All right, next up on my debt is dun, 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 my house. I absolutely love my house. I'm so glad that I purchased my house when I did because the level of equity that I have in this house right now is like, uh, it's so amazing. And I'm debating on, on the daily basis if I want to sell my house or not. I have over, over $100,000 in equity in this house. And this house is literally three years old to me. It was built in the 1970s, but it's three years old to me. I purchased this car in 2019. So I purchased my house for $175,200. And this is the remaining balance, $162,033.42. I have a relatively low interest rate, which is like 3.2% for my house. So prior to all of this, I had a really good credit score. Like I got my house with like my credit score being like 694. And the reason why my credit score was in the 600s is because during that time in the state of Texas, prime season to purchase houses are between the end of May through August. I purchased my house literally the day before my 30th birthday on June 28th, 2019. So the reason why that's important is because Texas is a family state. People move when their children are out of school. So I started looking for my house in the beginning of May. I wasn't able to buy this house or close on it until the end of June. So I got my credit ran twice during this time. So beforehand, my credit was over 700. When they pulled it the second time for me to get approval for my house, it was barely under 600 points. So I still was able to get it. I got a relatively good interest rate. 3.2% really is a good interest rate for a house. And this payment amount, the 1407 is a combination of my mortgage as well as my escrow and my mortgage insurance. I know that some people watching this like mortgage insurance. I was on a first time home buyers program that covered my down payment, my closing costs, as well as any additional fees that I needed. I literally closed on this house for $100. I did not pay anything more to the title company than $100. And I got this house for $175,200. It's a three bedroom, two bathroom house. It's a brick home in the suburbs. So the value of the house these days is well over $280,000. So it was a great investment property for me. I was not anticipating for the equity in my house to increase by that much, but I'm very thankful for it. Now, to break up my monthly payment from my escrow, my monthly payment on this house, just the mortgage by itself, is $714. I'm going to say that again. My mortgage without my escrow is $714 on a fixed rate. It will never change, ever. <laughs> so that is my mortgage payment. I do have mortgage insurance, which is $125 a month. And the remainder is my escrow. So if you take 714 plus, oops, plus 125, and you subtract that from 1,407. So that's how much my escrow is per month. If you can see that. It's $568 per month in escrow. Now what I am trying to do is every time now when I get my income tax return, I wanna put part of that money towards my escrow so that my monthly payments can stay relatively low. I did the projections. My escrow should be going up this year when I do, excuse me, next year when I do get the numbers. So I already do have a plan for my income tax return when I do get it where that money's gonna go. Next up is my Jaguar. So many of you know, if you follow me on Instagram, that I recently purchased a 2019 Jaguar E-Pace, which I absolutely love. The car is used. However, when I got it at the dealership, it was a little bit over 42,000. So I put a significantly large down payment 
on the car and the remainder is just warranties that I have to pay for. So this is the remaining balance for my Jaguar, which is $30,706.84. My monthly payment, including all of my warranties and my coverage is $543. Now, I have a Lane Bryant credit card. Let's talk about this Lane Bryant credit card. And the reason why I have it is because, to be completely transparent with you all, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm a plus size woman. Not only do you know I'm a plus size woman, I have a large bust. I can't exactly go in Target and buy a bra. I can't exactly go into Dillard's and buy a bra. I need a store that carries larger cup sizes. So that's why I have a Lane Bryant credit card. Now, the balance on this card that's available is $500, but I don't max out my cards. So this is what's remaining at the moment is $108. My minimum monthly payment is $25. So if you're a plus size woman, you got a larger bust, you got some hips, you got some booty, girl, listen to me. Consider getting a Lane Bryant credit card because we have to wear our undergarments every single day. There's no way around it. You have to wear undergarments. So that is why I have my Lane Bryant credit card. Now, last is my 401k loan. So the company that I work for, I am very thankful that I can borrow from my 401k. This is not the type of loan where you borrow and it goes to the IRS that you took money out of your 401k. I can borrow against the balance that I currently have invested into my 401k and pay it back in a loan. So... Last year, if you again, if you follow me on Instagram, I broke my ankle. At the time that I broke my ankle, I didn't know what the future was going to hold. I didn't know what I had to pay for expenses, so on and so forth. I had to pay medical bills. I had to pay for basic things in my house. I needed a walker. I needed crutches. I needed certain items in my house just to help me to recover. Like literally, I had medications, prescriptions, that I was on. I had doctor's appointments that I had to follow up with. And that money was coming out of my pocket because it's not a basic necessity. It's not like a regular checkup. So I had to pay for those doctor's appointments. And I'm almost done paying this off. The balance that's remaining is $298. It's $48 per pay period. So it's per check that $48 is coming out of. So and I don't see it. I just use it towards my regular pay. I'm not paying it any attention at all. I just go based off of what is deposited into my checking accounts. Now, the total, <laughs> the total amount of my debt that I currently have, if y'all are ready, are you ready, people, to see how much total debt I have? one hundred ninety six thousand nine hundred fifty seven dollars and forty seven cents in debt i know many of y'all are looking at that like that is not a lot of debt but just the number listening to the number and how much debt i have is like <laughs> that's a lot yes i know that over 80 percent of that is my house but still i have a lot of debt outside of that I have a lot of debt outside of that and I want to pay that down. Yes, I do plan on staying in my house for as long as I want to. However, I need to get this balance down significantly and I am going to be starting. I want to thank you all for watching this video and listen, if you are interested in seeing my financial journey, my expenses journey, what I'm spending my money on because my next video that I'm going to be doing is what I'm actually spending my paycheck on. But I need to be completely transparent with y'all and what my debt is. And next, I'm going to tell you about my regular bills because this isn't just the only thing I have to take care of. I have electric bill. I have a gas bill. I have car insurance. I have groceries. I need gas. I need a lot of things. So I need you all to come back, check out my next video and see what I'm spending my money on. Now, one thing that you will notice, what was previously on here, is the middle girl lifestyle. So, I'm going to put that on my next video as well. So, there are some monthly payments that you can pay if you want to live a luxurious lifestyle. 
and you can pay those payments on luxury items like Gucci, like Louis Vuitton, like on vacations, so on and so forth. If you wanna travel wherever you wanna go, you can have monthly payments taken out of these different companies because they'll pay you up front, you pay them back, and everything's glamorous. So that's gonna be on my next video. And I hope you stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this and you wanna stay on this journey with me and watch me pay this debt down, baby, because this just ain't sitting right in my spirit. But that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in, coming back to my channel and that we could get reacquainted and have a little family reunion since it's been a year. But I love you all and I will talk to you later. Peace.